Are you thinking about buying a condo here in Florida? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about five things that you need to know before you look any further. Hey, I'm Rafael Gonzalez. I'm a real estate agent here in Florida, and I get so many people that reach out telling me they're moving and relocating here from the Northeast, the West Coast, even the Midwest in Canada. They're trying to get out of the cold and make their way down to sunny South Florida, and many of them are looking for condos. So if you're thinking about making that move yourself, give me a call, shoot me a message, schedule an appointment, and we can go through this and talk through things together. Together. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the different types of condos you find here in Florida. Condos are unique in that you own the airspace of the walls of your unit and an undivided interest in the common elements, but they can come as low, mid, or high-rise projects. Townhomes are sometimes considered condos, and even there's condos that are freestanding. So before you go on any website and click the condo button, think about the lifestyle you're looking for. Are you okay with going up and down stairs inside of your home, or would you prefer a flat? Are you gonna need an elevator to get to your floor, or would you need something ground level? Do you wanna be close to the beach or the intracoastal? Maybe you want something more centrally located downtown or in the commercial district. All of these things factor into it. Number two, let's talk about why a condo might be a better option for you over a detached home. A big part of that is the lifestyle. A lot of people are attracted to condos because they're lower maintenance and they require less upkeep. A condo association or COA is responsible for pretty much all of the exterior maintenance. And that includes the roof, siding, lawn care and landscaping. If there's something wrong with the pavement or the pool, the COA has got you covered. And most homeowners don't realize how much time and money they really pour in to keeping up the outside of their homes. And condos are all about that laid back, lock up and leave lifestyle. Now, that doesn't mean you're off the hook for the interior. If a fridge goes out or a water heater or AC needs fixing, you've gotta get that taken care of. Also, every condo development is gonna have different things that they offer residents. So figure out what's important to you. Some common ones that you'll see a lot are clubhouses, pools, gyms and walking trails. Sometimes utilities like water or internet are included, and some communities get more upscale with sports courts like tennis or pickleball. Some are gated, and some have golf or access to a marina or a private beach. And when you're enjoying these amenities or even just grabbing your mail, you're gonna run into your neighbors or someone from another building, and you're gonna find out that condos tend to have more of a sense of community and are typically more social. You're seeing the same people more often, you're interacting with them in common spaces and sharing a building with them. Since you're more connected with your neighbors this way, they look out for you, especially if your condo is gonna be used seasonally or you're gone for an extended period of time. If they see something, they're gonna let you know about it. And generally, condos are more affordable than detached homes. That's mainly because of the cost of land. Condos are built in areas that are desirable and people wanna live in like on the water or close to shopping, dining, and entertainment, and land in those areas just costs more. But condos take up less land themselves. There's usually more units in the development, so there's more options to choose from, and they have a smaller footprint, so you're gonna notice their initial costs are lower. However, it's not just about the lowest upfront purchase price, but it's about your ongoing monthly home ownership cost. Speaking of costs, number three is gonna be costs and financing. They go hand in hand because regardless of whether you're gonna be a cash buyer or you plan on taking out a mortgage, this is probably the most misunderstood part about buying a condo. So stick with me on this one. The list price of a condo for sale is just one number. It's an important one, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't tell the whole story. There's condos out there for sale for 150 to 200,000 that you'll see on these websites, but they don't tell you that that condo has over $800 a month in fees and a 50 to $100,000 membership buy-in. So what I recommend is figuring out what monthly home ownership costs you'd be comfortable with and work backwards from there. Every month, you're gonna have your condo fees. If you have a mortgage, then you're gonna have your principal, interest, property taxes, and insurance all wrapped into one. But if you're cash, you're gonna to need to have your money for taxes and insurance set aside in some kind of escrow. You're also gonna have your utility bills and they will be lower if it's a vacation home, but don't go and turn off your AC while you're gone to try to save a buck or you're gonna come back after a summer with the home caked in mold. And when you have that number, you have a range, then we find properties that support that range and offer the lifestyle you want with the budget you can comfortably afford. 
Now, I'm not a mortgage broker, I'm a real estate agent, but I work with some of the best loan officers in Florida that specialize and work day in and day out on all things condos. If you're considering getting a mortgage, I can put you in touch with someone who can get you more information on how their condo program can help you or if you want me or one of my partners help with finding the right condo for you here in Florida, remember to reach out so I can help you. And you might be thinking, well, Raphael, I've got the cash. It's gonna be really easy. No contingencies, no appraisals, no nonsense, no problems. And while that is true, the things that lenders take into consideration assesses the risk of their investment. And regardless of how you're financing your home, you should care about the risk and safety of your investment too. Lenders look at things like how many units in a condo project are investor owned, how many owners are behind on dues, and how much the association has in reserves. Conventional loans typically cap investors at 50% concentration, which means if over half of the owners in a development are investors, you might just have to put 30% down instead of 10 or 20% like you may have planned for. And what about reserves? Lenders want to see that the COA is budgeting all of their owner's money properly and has some money saved in case there's damages or repairs needed after a hurricane. And if the COA is in the red each month, there's likely already some deferred maintenance going on or there may be a special assessment coming that they're going to charge all of the owners on top of their monthly dues. So when buying a condo, especially if you're a first time home buyer and plan on using an FHA loan, or you're a veteran and you wanna use your VA loan benefits, you need to know what condo projects are approved by that agency. Florida is a veteran-friendly state and there's over 2,700 VA approved projects. So if you're a veteran, you wanna work with someone who knows which projects are gonna work with your loan type. And same goes with FHA. Right now, there's about 200 approved projects. It's tougher for FHA buyers right now, but there's over 2,000 that expired that can submit for reapproval. So working with a lender who has experience submitting those reapproval requests is really important too. Another thing you might not think of much, but lenders really care about is insurance and litigation. If you're cash, technically you're not required to get condo or flood insurance, but think about it. If a part of the condo community is in a flood zone, you definitely want your association and your unit to be covered. And then there's litigation. Nowadays, everyone is litigious. In the past, there's been a strict halt on condo lending when litigation is found, but in recent years, there's been updates to allow that not to be the end-all be-all as long as it doesn't relate to the safety and structural soundness of the condo development. All these things are stuff that lenders look at and you should be aware of them so there aren't any surprises when you're under contract. And I wanted to briefly mention this for anyone living abroad and thinking about getting a vacation home or rental property in Florida. While a majority of international buyers did buy in cash, it's entirely possible to get a mortgage in the US. And it's not as difficult as you may believe. Working with a great lender who has experience with international buyers and condos is a must. They'll go over some of the documents you'll need, like a letterhead from your company showing how much you made last year, as well as your position, and you're gonna to wanna to set up a US bank account and have funds in it before we start looking at properties. Number four is probably the most important part you should consider before you decide if buying a condo is right for you, and that's really understanding their rules and regulations. If you can get your hands on them and any other condo docs before going under contract, it's always best, but otherwise you're gonna have a due diligence period where you can have an inspection done and time to review all of the rules and decide if you wanna move forward on that particular condo. Usually that's between three and 15 days, but you really don't wanna wait that long. Look those over and fill out and submit your application as soon as possible because you're gonna need approval from the condo board before you close and that can take up to 30 days from when they receive the application in full with everything filled out correctly. So what are some of the rules that are common that you may run into? A big one that I find are pet restrictions. Some condos don't allow pets at all and others limit how many pets you can have or they put weight, size, and breed restrictions. If you're a pet lover, you definitely wanna know this ahead of time so you don't get put in any uncomfortable situations. Another one is vehicle restrictions. You may only have one parking spot or there may not be any assigned parking at all, so you'll have to race to find a spot. And oftentimes trucks and motorcycles aren't allowed, as well as any commercial or wrapped vehicles. This may not seem too bad, but having to get a new car when you're already budgeting for a house may not be feasible. And you can't even get a car right before or when you're financing because that can jeopardize what you qualify for. 
Another common restriction is in 55 plus condo communities. If you're under the age of 55 or have children or grandchildren who would be with you full time that are under the age of 19, age restricted condos aren't gonna work out. They typically have limitations on how long guests under 19 can stay, anywhere from seven consecutive days or even no more than 28 days out of the whole year. Something you may not have thought about is rental restrictions. A lot of people look at Florida and think they'll buy a condo to Airbnb it out, or they'll use a vacation home and plan on renting it out while they're gone for six months out of the year. Well, unfortunately, a lot of condos don't allow short-term rentals at all, or they have minimum lengths for the lease, like seven months at a time. If you were planning on buying a condo as an investor and just rent it out to a long-term tenant, well, you need to look carefully because many condos don't allow leasing, period and any current tenants are grandfathered in. Or you may have to own the condo for one to three years before you're allowed to even rent it out. And if you didn't do your research ahead of time, you can be stuck with a condo you can't use the way you intended, and you'll likely have to put it back up for sale and lose some money in the process. So the last thing we're gonna touch on is something that you shouldn't overlook, and I mentioned it earlier, and that's number five, deferred maintenance and special assessments. You may remember a couple years back when the condo collapsed in Miami. That began when the ground floor parking area and pool deck caved in and it was found that there was damage and neglect that compounded over the last 40 years that led to it collapsing. So I cannot stress this enough. If you're thinking about buying a condo, please get an inspection and ask the HOA for their recent inspections of the building. You might need it for insurance and you'll definitely want it for peace of mind and knowing what you're getting yourself into. If there's deferred maintenance or renovations that the COA is planning to address, the extra funds for that often come in the way of a special assessment. You wanna ask the COA if there are any future assessments coming up so that you can be aware and budget for it. Every homeowner is assessed an amount of money to chip in for these larger projects and you really don't want something like that sneaking up on you. So I really hope you found this video helpful and learned something. Like I said, I'm a real estate agent who shoots tons of videos like this about what's it like to live here in Florida and some of our different cities. And I showcase a lot of new homes here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe. I'd love to see your comments down below. I know I'm gonna get all different types of comments, but that's fine. I'll be watching and replying to as many as I possibly can. If you're thinking about relocating here, give me a call, shoot me a message or schedule an appointment. I'd be more than happy to help you.